Hey, hey, wise. Hello. Uh oh, the whole thing moving. Happy self care Friday. Should you smell it, spell it right? That ain't a little shaky today. A little shaky going on back here. Hello. Why is it leaning? <laughs> Happy Self Care Friday, wise. Happy Self-Care Friday. Coach T here with you on today. Listen, we got a lot of ground to cover today, so I want to go ahead and just jump on in. Jump on in. Um, I'm going to share some transparency with you. We're going to say a little quick little prayer. We're going to even get into the word today a little bit. Um, man, listen. I have tried to <laughs> on purpose, on purpose this week. I have tried to on purpose to rest, to turn off the noise, to turn off the phone calls. I even used the do not disturb uh, button this week. Um, I had to make a decision this week. And I don't know why this week. Maybe it's because it's the last week of the of the month going into the new month. Um... But I had made I had to make a decision to see about me. <laughs> I had to make a decision, okay? Um so forgive me, forgive me if um you have been trying to contact Coach T and I was a delayed, I was a little delayed. I normally don't go too long, no more than about twenty four hours, forty eight hours. Um, responding back to your emails, please forgive me. This week was heavy. Ooh, it was so heavy. Um, it was heavy this week. <laughs> and the reason being is because um, I felt like I was picking up a lot of spiritual activity. Um, I was picking up a lot of things. Um, my spirit was real sensitive to some things that was that was taking place um, from my sessions. Um, I feel like I've been, you know, picking up some things just from, you know, encountering certain people um, outside, outside of me being a coach, which I sometimes forget. <laughs> I be sometimes forgetting. You can be so in routine doing this to sometimes you forget, like, you know, you, you do have a family too, and you, you have a husband and you have children and you, you know, you do need to see about you. Sometimes, sometimes be, you know, in between my passionness for this and in between you know me just trying to stay you know afloat um not get you know behind on anything that type of thing I forget I forget that I have to attend to myself I have to attend to my family I have to attend to my you know my children my own husband um <laughs> so sometimes I have to intentionally turn off so if you emailed me and I didn't respond back to you right away just know when those moments like that happen, that means I have I have turned down. Um, I probably have put you on do not disturb, and I will get back to you within twenty four to forty eight hours. Okay. Um. So I just wanted to share that. I just wanted to share that this has been a week. Okay, it has been a week. Very, 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 very challenging. I understand it comes with the territory, and so that's why I feel more. Like God is saying, you have to be intentional about putting that time to the side. Like you have to really, really be intentional. So once I finish on, you know, Fridays, um, the weekend is, you know, Friday, Saturday is kind of busy. Um, but Sunday, Monday, I check out for the most part. Um, admin day, admin day has even been, you know, kind of been heavy, um, which I normally do on Sundays. But I still try to get that did and be finished um, with that. Hello. Um, I still try to get that did and finished, you know, um, definitely before 4, 5 o'clock. 
so I can turn down and be ready for, you know, prepare for the rest of the week. Um, so yeah, that's my little, you know, bit. And I wanted to just go ahead and get that out. Let y'all know, I'm um, like, Coach T, you ain't been, you know, posting as much on, on your story this week. I, I've been, I, I listen, it's been, it's been a turn down week. Okay. Anyway, anyway, on that note, I do want to share something with you. I do want to share something with you. As you can see the title, um, how many rounds can you go? <laughs> Which I think kind of like just goes in with everything I just kind of mentioned. How many rounds, why, do you have in you? How many rounds do you have in you? And I want to start off by first saying, if you are looking for an easy way through this, there is none. There is none. So just, just stop looking. If you're looking for an easy way to do this journey, there is none. So stop looking. All right. Stop looking for an easy way to do this. There is no easy way. Um, this is a heavy, heavy, heavy type of assignment. And I say assignment. I emphasize assignment. Maybe other coaches and maybe other providers, um, maybe other ones, you know, who talk about this um, may say something different. But Coach T, I say an assignment because I feel I feel this type of work that is required to maintain this type of journey is not just something that you just voluntarily doing or you know you just voluntarily signing up for i say god has handpicked you specifically for this job and has given you this assignment he has called you to this place i don't necessarily agree um with others who you know say what they say um, about, you know, the marriage, you know, marriage restoration and marriage, you know, separation, um, the journey, I come to my wife and I say, this is an assignment. This, this is an assignment because in no way, in no doggone way, nobody going to sign up to do this type of work, to endure this type of pain, to go through this type of suffering, if it was not... <laughs> something divinely acts of i don't i don't see a wife just saying oh yeah pick me you know i i do it i i sign up for this type of suffering i sign up for this this, this type of pain you know i sign up for you know this type of endurance i, I sign up for it no no you're not you're not just signing up for this god has chosen you for this he's chosen you for this and one of the things i always emphasize to wives is if God has chosen you for this assignment, you need to find out why. You need to find out why. If God had said, listen, I need you to stay in this. I need you I need you to maintain this. I need you to trust me with this. I need you to not divorce your husband. I need you to walk this out. I need you to represent me. I need you to believe me. I need you to trust me. I need you to be still. If God has given you anything in that sense when it comes down to your marriage injury, listen... That's the invite. <laughs> that's that's just the invite. That's the invite. Your marriage injury is the invite to say, okay, God, I'm gonna let you in. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in. Okay, and so I just wanted to put that out there first. If you're looking for an easy way through this, there are none. Stop looking. There is no easy way through this journey. Hello, there is no easy way uh, through this journey. All right. And so on a note, I'm going to go ahead and just say a quick prayer, real quick. Father God, Jesus, Lord, I welcome you now into this live stream. I pray for no backlash. Lord, cover this message. Cover your word, God, with your son, Jesus, precious blood. Lord, put your words in my mouth to speak back to your people. God, cover me, Lord, with your son, Jesus, precious blood. As I pray and ask these saints in Jesus' name, amen. Listen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to some of my new followers. Um, welcome. My name is Coach T. My name is Coach T. I am a um, marriage and relationship, a marriage and relation, marriage relationship consultant, and um, mental health wife coach. All right, marriage relationship consultant and mental health wife coach. I coach wise, I coach wise who are going through a marriage separation, who are going through a marriage separation that involves 
adultery, abandonment, and or addiction. I help wise, I help wise understand the spiritual impact that has taken place in their marriage. I help wives to try to navigate through what they're going through, what they're going through in that unhealthy marriage separation or just in that unhealthy uh, marriage with, you know, the husband may be still necessary in the home, but he may have separate himself from the wife, all right? Um, as a mental health, as a mental health wife coach, I help wives to recover themselves. I help wives to recover themselves, basically holding wives accountable to the part that she played in the marriage breakdown and then helping her to rebuild and get herself back to a healthier place so that she can continue to maintain this journey in the most healthiest way. Hello. And so on that note, welcome. One of the things I like to just emphasize, I like to just emphasize and definitely try to differ, differentiate um, um, when it comes down to the type of coaching I do. Um, a lot of times I get ladies who, you know, when they reach out to me like, oh, well, you know, do you have any testimonies or do you have any, you know, uh, you know, stories from some of your wives who, you know, marriages have been restored. Um, and yes, I do. I do. I have, I have a few, I have several, I have several. Um, but, but one of the things I just like to highlight is I do not help you get your husband back. <laughs> I know a lot of coaches. I know a lot of providers. I know a lot of, you know, people that's on this social media platform. A lot of times that is some of the things that they are telling wise that they can help them get their husbands back or they can help, you know, their husbands, you know, come back home or those types of things. And I just want to say, I don't do that. All right. I, I do not do that. Hello. I do not help you to get your, hey girl, <laughs> I do not help you to get your husband back. That is not the, the, the promise. That is not something that I promise the wives that I work with. I help wives, I help wives to understand her marriage separation journey and I help wives to maintain her unhealthy marriage until, until God restores her marriage. I am not responsible. I am not responsible for um, wives and husbands reconciling and coming back together. That's not the that's not the role that I play. The role that I play as a coach, um, as a consultant, is helping that wife, helping that wife better to understand what she is going through in her marriage, better to understand maybe what, she, what her husband got going on, um, better to understand the spiritual side of her journey, um, and then help her help her to walk out a um, healthy faith journey as she trusts God. I teach the wife how to align herself with God so that God will speak to her directly concerning her marriage journey. However, however, in doing so, in doing so, a lot of wives' marriages are reconciled. Not because, oh, I gave you some special, you know, you know, steps or whatever for you to get your marriage reconciled, but because I help the wife to remain or get healthy herself. And because of her doing her own personal work, her healthiness is attractive. It's, it attracts her husband. It attracts her husband. And that's how her husband come back home. But it's nothing that I say to, oh, we're going to do this, you're going to do this, and girl, your husband is coming home. No, ma'am. I don't do that. All right? I don't stand underneath the, 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 the witch's thing and stirring some stuff up in a pot. I ain't doing any of that. All right? So if you reach out to Coach T for a consultant and you're like, oh, well, well you know, well, what you feel like God is saying? <laughs> or what you feel like God is telling you about my marriage? Or what you, I don't know what he told you. Okay, don't do that. Um, <laughs> don't do that. And so on that note, on that note, welcome, wise, welcome. Okay, like I mentioned, if you're looking for an easy way through this, there are none. If you're looking for an easy way through there, through this, there are none. God has been speaking to me a lot, a lot this whole week, and so. I have been battling. I have really, really been battling with what I wanted to share um, and, you know, what I was going to come on and talk about. But I knew, I knew for sure it had something to do with keeping wise in the rain, keeping wise in the fight, helping wise to maintain this journey. Because what I'm getting is, and what I have been hearing is a lot of TKOs have been taking place, all right? A lot of knockouts have been taking place, it's, have been taking place, and the reason it's taking place is because wives are not getting a full understanding of their journey they're not getting a full understanding of the role that they play they're not getting a full understanding of what they're supposed to be doing they don't know the 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 
the necessary, you know, steps or the necessary things that have to take place. Some things are just a non-negotiable. Some things just has to happen in order for you to even maintain this, all right? And so today, today through, you know, prayer, through, you know, I'm like I said, I've been struggling through some things my 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 own self, um just battling with some stuff. So through prayer, through fasting, through, you know, one of my uh greatest um things that i'm most grateful for is being able to pray in the spirit um and that was one of the things that i heard the lord the lord tell me early in this week he's like every time you open up your eyes just just start praying in the spirit anytime you get an opportunity to pray just just start praying in the spirit um and so now i i kind of have an idea why he was telling me that because this week has been heavy all right it has been really really heavy um but today but today God did confirm, God did confirm to me um, in the book of Psalms, in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, um, which we will be going over and reading today, what he wanted me to say to the wives on today, all right? But, um, I want to share this with you first. I want to share this with you first. If you have been called to this place of standing for a unhealthy marriage, please hear me on this, wife. This is not about your marriage. If God has called you to stand for this unhealthy marriage, this is not about your marriage. This call, and like I mentioned earlier, this assignment is not for you to monitor your husband's behavior. It's not for you to monitor your husband's actions. It's not for you to point out everything that your husband has done wrong. It's not for you to say, oh God, but what about him? Look at him. What about him? Look at him. This is not why God has called you to this place. Okay? This was not for you to monitor your husband. But this is for God to shape your behavior. This is for God to shape you. This is for God to prepare you. All right? And the only reason, the only reason God has allowed things to turn sour in your marriage, the only reason God has allowed this hardship to come up, the only reason God has allowed these things to turn upside down like he has is because you, wife, have been chosen for something greater than what you're going through in your marriage. That's just the bottom line to this. And if wives would get that part, if they would have an understanding of that part first, it would make this journey a whole lot easier for them moving forward. If they can grab hold to, this is not about my marriage. This is not just about my marriage. God is trying to get my attention about something. This is not just about my husband. God is trying to show me something about myself on this journey as well. If wives can grab that first, then it will be easier for her to move forward and go, you know, go forward with the next steps. Now. Marriage, for the most of us who are married, a lot of times if you have went through, you know, any type of marriage counseling or if you heard any type of, you know, messages on, you know, messages on marriage or even just, you know, in regular church, you always hear that marriage is your first ministry. Marriage is your first ministry. And it is. Marriage is your first ministry. And a lot of times, a lot of times, that's where you get the most training. I know I did. <laughs> I know I did. Okay. And that means, that means God will process you, wife, through the hardship in your marriage. He will process you through the hardship in your marriage. But after you are well and completed, after you are well and completed, you will be ready for the greater task that he has for you. Wives have to understand, and this is why I reference 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 16a, but also 17, Okay. When rights read, you know, how do you know, wife? How do you know if you won't be the one who would save your husband? How do you know? All right. That's the first part of it. Uh, you know, 17A. But then it goes on to say, but anything, any, any, um, any um, place God has called you to, any place God has called you to, you are to represent him. Any place that he has called you to, you are to represent him. All right. This is one of the reasons why I reference, why I reference First Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verses 16a and then 17 as well. Marriage is your first ministry, wife. Okay. Understand that. Marriage is your first enemy, your first, your first ministry. Okay. Now, the goal, the goal of the enemy is to knock you out. <laughs> All right. The goal of the enemy is to knock you out so you won't make it to your greater place. Once the enemy gets word like, OK, <laughs> some things are starting to change and some things start, start to shake up. Oh, you know, a guy has, you know, even allowed, 
him to start, you know, shaking some things up in your marriage or coming knocking at your door. Um, you have to understand his goal. His goal is to knock you out completely out. OK, it's like you being in that. And I want to reference, you know, you being in a, a boxing ring. The goal of the enemy is, is to knock you out. How many rounds can you go? <laughs> how long can you go before he knocks you completely out? How long, how, how many rounds can you go before he, you know, he takes you completely out? This is what his goal is. All right. This is what his goal is. And what stands in between of God's best for you is your marriage injury and the steps you would have to take in order to move forward on this course. What stands in between of your marriage injury are the steps you have to take in your marriage injury. All right. Now. There are certain things, there are certain things that you just have to have on this journey. There are just certain things that you, there, that is, is just not a negotiable, all right? It is non-negotiable. It is non-negotiable, all right? One of those things is you need to get the right counsel and accountability. You need to get the right counsel and accountability. You need to get the right counsel and accountability, so many wives I speak with talk about, oh, it's just me and God. Oh, I'm just trusting God. Oh, me and God is doing this. And I say to that every single time, ma'am, you're going to run into a blind spot. Ma'am, you're going to come up against something that you're not going to be able to handle on your own. Ma'am, something is going to come up. The enemy is going to deceive you in some type of area if you are not being held accountable on this journey. All right? Just because God has called you to this doesn't mean that he's saying, I want you to just do this by yourself. No, he wants you to use wisdom. You have to make sure that you are getting the right, which is my next one, get the right strategy and resources, okay? Get the right strategy and resources. So many times when God gives a word to a wife or God gives a word to you, um, you think, okay, well, that's it. You know, God gave me a word. I'm going to just, you know, send the word. No, that's action that has to be put in that. That's action. Even when God tells you to be still, there's an action behind being still. <laughs> you have to actually be still about whatever it is that he's telling you to be still about, but you still have work to do behind that. All right. And so you have to get the right strategy and resources. You have to get the right strategy and resources. So many times I hear wives talk about, you know, them being confused about, you know, they hear one thing over here. They hear one thing over there. They hear one thing. This person saying this and this person saying this. And this is why I say you need to get connected to the right source. You need to get connected to the right provider. You need to get connected to the person who God is calling your ear to. Too many wives are listening to too many people and they're trying to put this gunk together because they're not willing to do the work or sacrifice or invest to get the necessary things that they need on this journey. Just because God has given you a calling or an assignment, you are responsible for uh, uh, stewarding it. <laughs> you are responsible. You are responsible for you know doing your part on it. When God calls you to a, a to a certain thing, you He still holds you accountable to store it well. And so many times, wives feel like just because they've been called to this journey that they don't have anything else to do well god told me that you know to stand for my marriage or god told me you know to stay in this place and so i'm going to just trust god no that's not what that means that means you have to now do your work there is a responsibility that god is holding you accountable to it goes into the story of the you know of the man with the what was it the the businessman i think it was in the gospels um the businessman went on a trip you know he you know he left his servants you know um you know responsibilities he gave you know one servant you know three talents he gave another servant uh, uh, two talents and another one, you know, he gave one. And the one who got the three and the two, you know, they did well. They, you know, they, they took care of it. They stood it well. But then that one, he was like, oh, well, I just sat here and, and I, ain't, I ain't do nothing with it. I was just, you know, I, you gave it to me. So I just sat here and just kind of held on to it. And it's like, no, <laughs> that ain't what I told you to do. That, you, matter of fact, give me yours back. I'm going to give it to somebody else, okay? So just because, just because God has called you to this, don't think that there's nothing else for you to do. You play a role in this, all right? And then, um, another another thing that you need that is a non, a non negotiable on this journey, you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision that you are going to go all the way, come hell or high water. You have to make a decision. And so many whites are looking for someone else to make a decision for them. They're looking for, well, I'm going to see how my husband going to act over here. And that's going to determine whether or not I'm going to make a decision. Or I'm going to see how, you know, I'm going to see how things go over here. And that's going to determine whether or not I make a decision. And it's like, that's not how this works. <laughs> that, that's not how this works. You have to make a decision in the beginning that I'm going to do this no matter what 
is throwing my way i'm going to do this no matter what may come my way on this journey go back and read uh psalms 23 yeah do i walk through the valley of the shallow of death i will fear no evil listen things are going to come your way you're going to deal with all different types of um challenges on this journey but you have to make a decision i'm gonna go all the way either way it goes all right i'm gonna go all the way either way it goes all right and then the last thing of uh, the last thing number four that is a non-negotiable something that you must have on this journey you gotta maintain your mental health you gotta maintain your emotional health you gotta maintain your physical health and you gotta maintain your spiritual health this is my message to the wise you have to take care of your well-being on this journey you have to take care of yourself if you are not doing that if you are not stewarding yourself in that area you might as well go and sit down <laughs> you might as well go and sit down and just and, and just shut it on down because you have to make sure that you are maintaining yourself on this journey all right these four things are non-negotiables these four things are non-negotiables and if you have not already gotten this far you need to start today if you have not gotten to any of those things you need to start today if you only say just got to one of them you need to get you know go to the next step you need to go to the next step you need to go to the next step you have to make sure that those things are taken care of just for you to even you know go 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 forward with with the next steps all right I know many people who think they can pray and fast and read the Bible through this. And even though that is part of this, that is part of this, a huge part of it is knowing and learning where you are, what do you, where do you want to be, what's stopping you from getting there, and then what's the plan for you to get there. Those are four questions that I ask my wife clients every time we meet. Those are four questions that I ask my wife clients. What's, what, what, what you got going on? Where are you trying to go? What's next for you? What's, what's holding you up? What's hindering you from getting there? All right, let's, come, let's put together a plan for you to get to that place. And then we start taking those steps for you to get to that place. All right? If you don't know, if you, know, if you don't know where you're going, why <laughs> would you even stop making arrangements to, to, to go there? A lot of times, wives are still trying to figure out, you know, they, they're so stuck on the pain part of this. And I want to emphasize this and highlight this today. If you are still dealing with the grief, the shock, the, oh my God, I can't believe my husband's acting like this. Oh my God, this is so confusing. Oh my God, you know, I'm still, you know, struggling with this. I can't believe, he, you know, he just picked up in love. You need to walk through the, my, I call it my emotional healing, my emotional healing uh, guide. Where I walk wife through four sessions, four sessions to help them deal with the grief part of their marriage separation. Because that part, once you get past that part, then that's when you're able to start taking the next steps forward to recover you. But if you have not dealt with the grief part of it, you need to do that first. You need to do that first so you can start healing for yourself. You need to ask those hard questions. You need to get understanding. You need to be aware of some things. You need to have a different perspective. You need to renew your mind. You need breakthrough. You need freedom. You need to be able to walk through some of these things and figure out, hey... What's going on? <laughs> like, how do we even get here? And so that takes time. That takes time. So if you are in that place, if you are in that place, I want to encourage you to sign up for my emotional healing sessions. Well, that's four sessions, including your consultation. And you can begin to start healing in your emotions. You can begin to start understanding your husband a little bit better, understanding your marriage a little bit better, understanding why you are even at this place. This is how I help wives to understand um um, that part of their of their marriage separation. All right. Now going back to those four questions that I just mentioned. Um, the four questions, like I said, um, those are some questions that I ask my wife clients every time I meet with them. All right. Why? So you have to understand. You need a system. You need a plan. You need a coach. You need a counselor. You need a therapist. You need someone who can help you with a plan and hold you accountable. A lot of times I speak to some wives and they the goals that they set in are unreal, like they're just unrealistic. And it's like if this is what you're trying to do on your own, this is why you're not getting far. <laughs> because you gotta you if you're not setting realistic goals, and sometimes it's not like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go on a water fast and I'm gonna do a water fast for 30 days. Really? When have you did that before? <laughs> have you tried that? Are you gonna just jump out here and just do a water fast like that? And you ain't had no kind of experience in that. You ain't walked through that. You ain't tried to do that for a couple of days to see how your body do. Or is your body healthy enough for you to do a water fast for that long? Like sometimes, sometimes it's simple things. It's simple things as that that wives are trying to do on their own. It's like you ain't going to last long. 
You're not, you're not going to last long in, 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 in this ring, all right? You won't last long on, in, in this ring. And so you need that accountability. You need somebody to hold you accountable. Now, if you're saying, and this is, I just wanted to throw this part out here as well. Well, I can't afford a coach. You know, I can't really afford, you know, the prices of a coach right now. I can't, you know, I can't do anything like that. If God has called you to this. And you feel like God has telling you to not divorce your husband, and you feel like God is telling you to stand for that unhealthy marriage, then God's gonna give you provision. God is going to provide. God is going to make a way. But you gotta do your part, okay? God is going to give you provision. He's going to provide. He's gonna make a way. Don't be like, oh, well, I'm just waiting for God to just give me provision, and I'm just waiting for God to just provide for me. No, you need to take actionable steps to start doing that. Too many wives are so passive on this journey. It's just. Ugh. they're just too passive about the next steps and that, that's one of the reasons why i'm like listen i don't got time for that <laughs> like I don't, I don't have time i don't have time for that it's either you want to get the help and do the work or you don't and so if you want to get the help and do the work then you start taking some steps you start doing some things you start you know uh making those steps forward to see what do i have to do how can i get approved for uh for a loan how can i how can i get approved for you know for for this or how can i you know put some money to the side weekly and start saving towards this how can i you know maybe i can use some of my some of my 401k and and put towards this whatever it is that you have to do your starbucks every week every day uh coffee can be put to the side for you to pay for some of your sessions and this is where i say the difference between people who are serious about this journey versus the ones who are not a lot of people are saying they won't help on this journey but a lot of times these people are like mm, they don't really want no help <laughs> they, they don't really they, they looking for something else i don't know what they're looking for i ain't gonna say it's a handout but they're looking for something um i don't got time for that <laughs> <laughs> I want to help wives who actually are ready to do their work, who are saying, I'm tired of being in this place. I'm tired of being on this cycle. I'm tired of, I'm tired, I'm tired of going around the same mountain over and over again. I'm tired of falling backwards. I'm tired of doing the same things over and over again. I'm ready to do my work. You need to sign up. All right. You need to sign up. Okay. God will make a way. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. So we're going to read, we're going to read Psalms 55. All right. And, um, we're probably gonna read the whole thing, or at least we're gonna probably read the whole thing. And our reason being, the reason being is because this is a lot of wise frustration during this journey. It's 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 from this prayer. It's from this prayer. Um from from David. And so I wanna read that. And then after after we complete reading um Psalms 55, um, I wanna share with you five ways that you can actually stay in the rain. Five ways where you don't have to get knocked out, all right? So, let's start. Let's start with Psalms 55, all right? And it says, listen to my prayer, O Lord. Do not ignore my cry for help. Please, please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shoot. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. The first thing I want you to know about this is you will have an enemy to fight if you are going to do this stand. You will have an enemy to fight, wife, if you're going to do this stand. If you're going to do this journey, if you have accepted and said yes to this, you will have an ongoing enemy to fight. All right? I want you to understand that. My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me. And I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a oh, that I had wings like a dove. That I will fly away and rest. I will fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I will escape far from this wild, far, far from this wild storm of hatred. Listen, the next thing I want you to know about this: fear is always going to be a challenge for you on this journey. Fear is a it's always going to be a challenge for you on this journey. It's one. It's going to be one of your biggest, biggest things that you will have to endure. However, God is not the author of fear. So you have to learn, wife. You have to learn how to face fear in its face and be able to pull that thing down. All right? Fear is going to be one of your biggest challenges on this journey. All right? Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plans, for I see violence and conflict in the city. Its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders, but the real danger is wickedness within the city. Listen, 
spiritual activity is always taking place on this type of journey. Spiritual activity is always taking place on this type of journey. Everything is falling apart. Threats and threats and cheating are rampant in the streets. It is not an enemy who taunts me. I can bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from them. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion, and close friend, and close friend, who, um, it is my. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion, and close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. Why, your biggest enemy. Your biggest enemy will be the enemy from your own household. Your biggest enemy will be the enemy from your own household. Okay? Let death stalk my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive. Please understand, you have to recognize the enemy in the person. It's not the person who's the enemy, but it's the enemy that's working in the person. And you need to recognize that enemy. All right? Let death stop my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive. For evil makes for evil makes its home within them. But I will call on God and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms, he ransoms me and keeps me safe. For the battle rages against me. Through many still opposes me. God, God who has ruled forever will hear me and humble them. God, the army of hosts, will send his army down to fight for you. God has an army that works for him. And he will send his army down to fight for you, all right? These are just some key key notes I want you to be aware of. Just want you to be aware of on this journey, all right? For my enemies refuse to change their ways. They do not fear God. Pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promise. His words are as smooth as butter, but in, the heart is war, but in his heart is war. His words are as soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Verse 22, uh, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He would not permit the godly to slip and fall. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He would not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O oh God, you, O oh God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. God will take care of you the enemy of your marriage god will take care of the enemy of your marriage your job is to maintain maintain your reign <laughs> maintain your reign all right your job is to stay in a fight your job is to continue to stand your job is to continue to trust god all right I was speaking with one of my wife clients this week um, during a session and she informed me, she informed me that the more she turned off the noises, social media and drew closer to God by studying and reading his word, the more he spoke to her. All right. The more he spoke to her and things um, that he spoke to her about was not only pertaining to her marriage, but it was also things that he was showing her and speaking to her about in reference to, you know, what he wanted to do. Some things with her calling, some things about, you know, her herself. And this is one of the things I try to always really help wife to understand. It's like the closer that you, you know, you draw in to God, the closer he'll draw in to you. The closer you sit with and meet with God, the closer, the more he will begin to say things and give you different revelations and give you different you know different steps give you different you know ideas give you more instructions you have to understand that the time that you're spending with God is not something that you should take for granted that time that you're spending with God is precious I call it the sweet spot all right I call it the sweet it's one of the sweetest places to be in which is in his presence and so this wife, she she gathered like, hey, I see me spending this time with God is really, really working. I see me spending time with God is really, really helping me. Me spending this time with God is how I hear from God. 
And so I wanted to share this quick transparency moment with you. Um, I remember when I had a um, dream, and this was after my husband, you know, had and came back home. And um, I had had a dream, and in the dream, I see myself like laying down in the kitchen, like on the floor. I was on the floor in the kitchen. And um, I could see my husband, you know, like, opening up the front door or whatever and going out the door. And it was, like, these different, you know, ladies or whatever, you know, behind him or whatever. And I was, like, I'm not understanding what that dream meant, God. Like, I'm, not, I'm not really understanding, what, you know, what that dream meant. Well, one of the things that the Lord had shown me during that time was, you know, how tired I had been. And, you know, I was just, like, really, really uh, uh, tired. And he said, the goal of the enemy is to knock you out. The, and you know how you kind of like lay, you know, in the rain, <laughs> kind of like looking, it's like blurry and stuff. You know how they show it on TV? And that's how it looked in a dream. Like I couldn't even see straight, uh, you know, him, but I, it, was like a bl it was like a blur. And the Lord showed me, he said, this is a picture. He said, this is what's, this is what's trying to happen. The enemy, is, the enemy is trying to knock you, you know, the enemy is trying to knock you out. He's trying to take you out. And he's going to use, he's using this situation to, to take you out. And so I said, say, wise, you have to, you have to intentionally, you have to intentionally seek God concerning what it is that he's trying to show you, what it is that he's trying to do through you, what it is that he's trying to work through you. You have to be intentional about what it is because the enemy goal is to take you out. You have to know that up front. I spoke with a wife earlier today and how she was just telling me how she's just so frustrated and she just so, um, um, um. Basically, she was just saying, you know, it, it, it makes you it makes you want to give up. She's like, she can tell that the spiritual warfare is like, you know, really, really, you know, tapping in. And it just makes you want to just give up, even though she knows that's, like, that's not necessarily the best choice for her. But it makes her want to do that. The enemy goal is to take you out. The enemy does not want you to be successful on this journey. And so this is why when, you know, wives try to, you know, do this on, on their own or... When they're only just talking about their husbands, their husbands, their husbands, and they're not trying to do anything for themselves, it's like this is a quick way for you to get knocked out. This is a quick way for you to for you to go under. Now, like I said, there is a season that you do need to walk through that grief. Grief is very, very serious during this time and on this journey. And there are some times you need to walk through that. Like I said, I've had um just with the the, the emotional healing um sessions that I've had over the last thirty days, I've had some wives that sign up for it again because they're like, I need another round of this. You know, I I need another round of this. I'm not quite ready yet to start working. You know, on the on the on the next part or the next phase of this journey, I need to make sure that I am good in my emotions i need to make sure that i'm good in my mental in my mental state i need to make sure i'm good in my physical state i need to make sure i'm good in my you know in my in the spiritual area as well and so a lot of times a lot of times wives need to deal with that grief part but once you get through that part you need to start working on yourself all right you need to really start working on yourself one word i want to take i want you to take with you from this passage that we just read out of psalms 55 and that word is sustainability sustainability all right. This is a word that you need to learn. You need to take with you. You need to study. You need to let it sit with you. You need to take this with you on your journey. Sustainability is the ability to maintain or support a process over time. All right. My question to you is, how are you doing with that? <laughs> how are you doing with that? How are you doing with sustainability on this journey? Because I can tell you now, if you don't have any support on this journey, you're probably not doing too good. I can tell you that right now. If you do not have any support on this journey, you're probably not doing too good. Not only that, you're probably puzzling pieces together little bit by little bit. And then you're trying to understand this journey and you're trying to do things in your own strength. And it won't be long before you will crash and fall and you'll be completely out. You will be completely out this rain. And that's what the enemy wants. Okay. That's what the information, that, that's, what the, that's what the enemy wants. Okay. He wants you to be completely out the rain. The question that he's he's asking you, how many rounds can you go? How many rounds can you go? Too many wives, too many wives just want information, okay? And the enemy don't have any problem with you just getting information. He don't mind you having that. But when you start applying it and taking actionable steps, that's when he's threatened. That's when it becomes a threat. It is not enough. It is not enough, wife, for you to do this journey only by means of watching a video, only by means of, you know, puzzling pieces together. You need to go deeper. 
And that's why I always try to differentiate between the ones who are serious about this journey versus the ones who are not. Because a lot of people are saying with their mouth that they're serious and they want this, but they're not willing to do the necessary work that's required of them to do this. The enemy is trying to take you out. The enemy wants you to come out of the rain. All right. All right. So in the words of Chris Tucker from the movie Friday. <laughs> all right. If you do not, if you do not get anything is get this. You are going to get knocked the fill the blank, fill in the blank out. If you do not do these five things that I'm going to, I'm going to share with you. Okay. So five things you would need to stay in the rain. Five things that's going to keep you in the rain. It's going to help you maintain this journey. It's going to help you to do well in this journey are this, are these things. Okay. Number one, you need a solid and committed yes to the process that's before you. You need a solid and committed yes to the process that's before you. Too many wives play like the, you know, seesaw game on this journey. It's like as soon as things get hard, I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. You know, and then it's like, all right, all right, God, I'm coming back in, I'm coming back in. Then it get hard again, like, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. <laughs> then I, all right, all right, God, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But every time that fire, you know, get a little hot, every time it get a little hot, they want to pull out. And God's like, I can't use you like that. <laughs> I can't, I can't use you like that. I need a solid and committed yes on this journey, all right? So that's number one. Number two, an obedient spirit. An obedient spirit, okay? This is what's going to keep you in the rain. Don't say yes and then you change your mind. Don't say you're going to go all in and then you change your mind. Or, not that, what if God tells you to do something that you're not comfortable with doing? Then, now you're walking in disobedience. If God had said, I need you to do this, this, and this, and you just kind of like sitting on it. You kind of like thinking about it. You're like, I don't really know that's God. Now, I don't really know if I should be doing that. That's disobedience, okay? You cannot waver on this journey. So many wives I talk to are wavering. So many so many wives I'm talking to are up and down. So many wives I'm talking to put themselves at the end of the line constantly because they dab in and they get out. They dab in and they get out, okay? Because they keep on jumping in and out of the rain, God can't trust you. He cannot trust you with the next steps because you're not being obedient to the one that he's given you, all right? So that's number two. Number three, confidence. Cast not away your confidence, all right? This is why I offer the Curriculum Her Buoyancy Boost, all right? This is what the Curriculum Her Buoyancy Boost is all about. It teaches why her authority, her self-worth, her identity in Christ, all right? If you, wife, if you, wife, do not have confidence about the God who you are believing to restore your marriage, then what are you doing? What are you doing? If you don't believe that God hears your prayers, if you don't believe that God is going to restore your marriage, if you don't believe that God is going to do the things that he said he's going to do, then what are you doing? Why are you here? <laughs> Why are you here? You're just showing up and hoping that something's going to happen. You're just showing up and hoping that, you know, something's going to change. You know, just, you're just showing up. No. God said, I need you to build up your confidence in me. I need you to build up your confidence in me. This is what's going to help you to maintain this reign. This is what's going to help you to keep going. All right. Number four. Number four. You need vulnerability. You need vulnerability. You, wife, have to trust God with your heart. That's the first part. You have to trust God with your heart. That means you have to give you have to give God your heart over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Then you have to also you have to also be willing to get hurt in the process. All right. You have to be willing to get hurt in the process. But even if you get hurt, know how to bounce back. Know how to bounce back. This is what bonus come in at. Like, God, you know what? You done said this, and God, <laughs> I thought, I, you know, you was going to do it this time. And, Lord, I trusted you. This time, I trusted you. And, God, it still didn't happen, Lord. I don't want to keep on giving my heart away. I want to keep on being vulnerable. I don't want to keep on being in this place. I don't want to keep on going this route, and then things are going to still come up. You have to know why. You have to understand that your heart is going to be tested numerous of times. Your, your heart is going to be tested all the time on this journey. And this is one of the things I always emphasize to my wife clients is keep that heart pure. If that heart is not in a pure place, you are dealing with, you are, you are on rocky ground. You are on rocky ground because God cannot do anything with a heart and heart. God cannot do anything if that heart is not in a pure place. God cannot do anything with that. And so this is one of the reasons why I tell wives, hey, make sure you put, so I tell wives all the time, get you some oil, anoint your heart and ask God, Lord, keep my heart soft. <laughs> Keep, keep my heart, soft, God. Keep my heart in, in your hands. Keep my heart in, in your hands. Because even if God takes your heart and you ask him, and God is asking you to trust, trust, 
trust him with your heart, guess what? He's going to make sure he take care of your heart as well. All right. And so vulnerability is um, one of the things that you have to have in order to maintain these rounds that you're going to face on this journey. All right. And then number five, number five, the last thing, compatibility, compatibility. All right. Understanding that God is allowing these things to take place in your marriage to help you look more like him. One thing that I always emphasize on my lives, on my, you know, when I'm speaking to, speaking to wives, is your only job in your marriage is to represent God. Your only job in your marriage is to represent God. Whatever instructions that the Lord give you, whatever that comes your way, whatever challenges that you are facing, your job, your job is to represent God. It does not mean that you're not going to hurt. It does not mean that you're not going to cry. It does not mean that you're, gonna ha- you're not going to have a bad day. It does not mean that you're not going to mess up sometimes. does not mean that you know hey you may feel like giving up some days does not mean any of that what it simply means is god is going to take you through this process and as he's taking you through this process you're going to come out on the other side looking a little bit more like him a little bit more like him okay a little bit by a little bit you're going to look more like him all right now i want to just say this real fast too have you ever prayed for your marriage injury and then nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> have you ever like you know i prayed and prayed i know that was one of my biggest things like god i've been praying for this man i've been praying for this and ain't nothing happened yet like what's going on but then then you will pray for something else and then god answered that it's like wait <laughs> what's going on jesus like did you not just hit me and pray for my husband and pray that you fix this and pray that you would deal with that woman by fire and pray that you do all these things like did you not hit none of those prayers but then when i asked you can you like you know jesus please make sure i can get some you know gas money for for this week You answer that prayer. (laughs) Like, what's going on with this, all right? Many times, many times, God is not answering your prayers concerning your marriage injury or concerning the situation in your marriage is because he's using that. He's using that to teach you something, all right? He's using that to develop something in you. He's using that to help you to gain that confidence. He's using that to to give you that that, that thick skin, all right? He's using that. He's using those things to to challenge you, all right? You're wondering why your prayers are not being answered. And God is saying because you have not got the lesson that I'm trying to teach you. You have not got the lesson that I'm trying to teach you. And if you don't get the lesson, you're going to get knocked out. (laughs) You won't be able to make it in this ring. You won't be able to go another round of this. If you do not learn the lessons that I'm trying to teach you on this journey. All right. Listen, you don't just get the answers by passively doing the same mundane things over and over again. You don't get the answer that way. (laughs) You get it by drawing closer to God. You get it by spending time with him. You get it by seeking him out more. You get it by sitting at his feet. You get it by, you know, studying his scriptures and getting in his presence. That's how you get it. That's how you stay in the ring. That's how you maintain the fight. That's why even when things get rough, you can say boldly and confidently, I will not be moved. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. One of the challenges a lot of times I have with some wives who are, um, you know, sometimes when wives, you know, come like a, a divorce situation may come up or uh, where the husband's like, you know, well, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with divorce. So I'm going to go, ho- you know, go ahead and, you know, process through, through, through the, divorce, the, the divorce process. And what I have to always remind wives is if God gave you a word, if he gave you a word, then you take that word to the bank. You stay on that word to the very end. You make sure that you check in with God and see, has anything changed? Has my instructions changed? Has anything else changed? And if God hasn't given you any new instructions or anything, you take that word all the way out to the end. Because it is something, it is something that God is using to teach you on that journey, regardless of what the outcome may be. All right. Regardless of what the outcome may be. He may be allowing it for a specific reason. And he'll let it go all the way to, to, to however it goes. Whether he turn it, whether he decides, you know, to, to, to let it X out or however it ends. You have to know, you have to know, you can take God's word all the way to the bank. And you say boldly, I will not be moved. Whatever challenges come my way, whatever things I may be dealing with, whatever things may come up, I will not be moved. I will not be moved on this journey, okay? What keeps you out of the rain is doing nothing. Okay, what keeps you out of the rain is doing nothing or for some wise doing the same things over and over and over again and getting no results or the same results. Okay, and sometimes wives think that, you know, what well, I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing, but ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing changing. It's a reason for that. <laughs> okay, it's a reason for that. 
Why can't the understanding know that God hears you? He sees you and he's going to bring you through all of this. He's going to bring you through all of this. Don't allow the enemy to take you out of the ring. How many rounds can you go, wife? How many rounds can you go before you throw in a towel? How many rounds can you go before, you know what, you let the enemy just take you out? How many rounds can you go? The goal of the enemy is to take you out of the fight. The goal of the enemy is to take you out of the race. The goal of the enemy is to pull you out of the ring. But you have to make a decision at the beginning that I'm going to go all the way, hell or high water. I'm going to go all the way because I know God has my back. He is going to take care of me on this journey and he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Listen, wife, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you if you're ready, if you're ready to start doing your own work, I want to encourage you to sign up for your wife consultation, okay? You can sign up today at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen, now, a lot of times, like I mentioned earlier about, you know, people saying, you know, well, you know, I don't, I don't have the money for the payments, this and that and the other. If you are, um, I know for me, I send my uh, wife clients, you know, through PayPal. I send my wife clients through PayPal. And PayPal has been sending us business owners um, a lot of emails about, you know, promoting um, their four installments. Their four installments is something that they have been really promoting um, and encouraging business owners to, you know, share with their um, with their clients. So if you are in a place where you're saying, well, I cannot make that type of, you know, commitment or can't make that type of payment, maybe you would be um, able to, you know, do the four installments that, you know, uh, PayPal is offering. It was something, it's something that has been brought to my attention um, through, through email. And I want to bring it to your attention. Don't allow, don't allow finances to stop you from getting to the place that you're supposed to be on this journey. There are ways, there are ways. And so that's why I say, if God has called you to this, he's going to make provision. He's going to make provision. Get in connect with the right source so you know how to do the same. And then, and then if you're still saying, well, you know, well, I need to try to figure out how I can get some, you know, regular income coming in. I want to see how I can get some income kind of like flowing in. Listen, you need to sign up and get my her own bonusy boss manual. All right. You need to get my her her own boss manual. You can sign up and um send me a message through my website and I will give you, I will send you over the, the download. I will send you over the download where you can get your hands on that and start doing your work for the ones who are ready to start making their own coins. All right. You want to make your own coins. Listen. Stay in the race. Stay in the rain. Don't allow, don't allow the enemy to take you out. He's trying to take you out mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and for many, many wives, financially. So you have an opportunity. If you have an opportunity to start your own consultant to coaching business, if you want to do that, you can sign up all these things at my website, www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen. I hope y'all have an awesome, awesome rest of your weekend. I'll see y'all on the other side. All right? Blessings.